it would be something we couldn't implement it in the 18 fiscal year, but we would be diligently working to try and find something to start June 1, 2018, mm -hmm. because that would be when we could fit it into the budget, and it would be an ideal time to actually go live. So we, we have no like uh, we have no contract, so we can. They don't require 30 days notice, nothing like that. Oh, I'm sure that's I'm sure that's. Do. She's saying it's an annual. It's an annual, right? annual renewal, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's not, as long as it's not auto renewal. No, no, absolutely not. Auto to the extent that we physically okay. have to send a check. Okay. All right. Well, I don't entertain a motion in a second to uh, authorize Christina to sign a quote for uh, her to uh, develop a new program. I'll make it. Mayor Cahill? Who seconded? Mayor Cahill? I thought. He made the motion. I didn't hear a second. You want to retain the motion? Yeah. Jerry made the motion. Second. Trustee Polito? Aye. Trustee Byer? Aye. Trustee Lancey? Aye. Mayor Cahill? Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. Appreciate it. All right, next we have a, uh, a discussion regarding the AT&T cell phone service versus Verizon. And I believe, uh, Joe, uh, you've been doing the research on that? Yeah, I've uh, now spent a lot of time on it. And I gave you each copies mm -hmm. of, um, one sheet has AT&T numbers and the other one has Verizon. Um, basically, this started because we had some, someone <laughs> who was needing a new phone in particular, and at this point there may be more than one. Uh, <laughs> Did it fall out of your pocket into the bottom of the digester? It would yes. still be there. <laughs> did did, did Chairman tell to recover it and return it? Yeah. So in the process of um, Initially, just looking to replace somebody's phone and what the cost would be, I ended up reviewing the entire phone bill that we've had. Um, we've had AT&T for a long time, and the plan that we've had with them is significantly higher than even what we can currently get with AT&T. Um, <clears throat> whether we go with AT&T or Verizon, their government packages um, if you look on the AT&T page, uh, what they would be considering for us is one of the basic phones at the $10 a month rate, and that would be the, the emergency, so to speak, emergency phone that we kept in the vault. Right, so I was telling you about how cheap they are versus yeah. oh my reversing God. people. Yeah. And it's oh, worth yeah. doing that. You're right. Yeah. Um, but then the other phones uh, for the five individuals that have uh, used the phones significantly all day, uh, the packages would be $34.99 per phone. And their minutes, their data uh, get pooled. So if we've got five phones and each of them get 200 voice minutes, mm -hmm. then for five we'd have 1,000. And so somebody might only use 100, somebody else might use 300, but okay. overall, we have 1,000 to use for all of them. The same happens with the data. Each phone gets five gigabytes, but for all five, it's 25. It's shared amongst them. So that could be if, if somebody's out and about and they need to check on, and like an RG&E poll, say, and Jake might be looking at polls when he's out, if there's lights out or whatever. Um, that was, would be a, an occasion where they'd use the data plan. Also using it for um, emails, when they have to check their emails and they're not in the office. So how does this compare as far as the, 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 the usage projected versus what we're currently using? This is the, yeah. the this We'd is be you're... looking at at least $100 less per month. Uh, no, I, I'm just talking about how many how many minutes and how much text oh. compared to the, like how many gigs were you currently using as an average compared? Um, they did a comparison 
which roughly um, voice was a little over 500 on the average. Um, the data was significantly less. Um, Than five gigs? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as those totals there, I think there would be more than enough for mm -hmm. what we need. Okay. Um, that, that answered my question, absolutely. Yeah, so in looking at just the, the phones themselves for the monthly bill, if we take the $10 phone plus those ones that are $34.99, we'd be looking at $184.95 plus the fees. Um, and with Verizon, the, the numbers are very, very similar. Yeah. Um, there are some significant differences, though, uh, in the long term. Uh, with AT&T, we have to wait 18 months to upgrade anybody's phone, or should something happen and they need to be replaced. Um, with Verizon, it's a 10-month time period. So technically, you could get five new phones every 10 months with Verizon. Um, there's no cancellation fees with either one. There's no set contract, so you can cancel them at any time. Um, the one thing that's appealing from my perspective with Verizon is you can also suspend the line without being billed at all for it. So like for instance, the one that we would keep in the vault, the emergency phone. You can suspend it for up to six months out of the year. So we could leave it in the vault inactive and if we were expecting a storm or whatever, I could call up or I can go online and activate it online. So it would activate immediately. Yeah. Yep. And then we could resuspend it. It just can't be more than six months in a year total to suspend the phone. Um, What's this recommended in the court time? Yeah. Okay. With both plans, we can get free smartphones. Depending on, with AT&T, the one that, that he originally quoted me was a Samsung, no, I'm sorry, was an iPhone 6S. We can also get an iPhone 6S with Verizon, but they have several other ones as well. Samsung S6, um, they have available, there's probably five or six of them. I would probably be looking at the iPhone 6S if it were me. Um, and we could get that with either plan. But it makes you feel better. Our technology department, which is massive, says that at the end of the day, the Samsung is a better, probably a better phone. Yeah. But for business and email and everything, the iPhone mm -hmm. is the way to go. It's yeah. easier Plus to you use. Plus, you got the protection. More, yeah, more compatible. Yeah. Built in, too. Yeah. So, that's what they say. Yeah. And a couple other things with Verizon, which is kind of making me lean that way, is. Um, we get 25% off of any accessories, so if we're looking at uh, covers or the, uh, the belt want holsters that uh, some, some of them like, they're all 25% off. And also, even just any employee can have a 19% discount on their phone bill if you go with Verizon. Yeah, that's what we have. It. We, really? have it, we have it for both, so you could call at and Because you're an employee of the village, yep. you would yeah. get that discount. And I think they'll match that. Well, well they might, yeah. at and will match it. Just be careful with Verizon. I don't know if anyone has Verizon now, but mm -hmm. I've had both, and we've had both at work. When you look at all those additional fees, the Verizon's is like 15 lines long, at and yes. isn't. So I don't know if these prices include all that yeah. junk that they had at the end, but there's a lot of it. There is they were actually, on the we news a while it. back yeah. when they were investigating Verizon for all yeah. the bad Charges. things. Yeah. So there's a lot of extra things they had. Mm -hmm. So but you need to really look at I'm not partial either way, but, but I, I have Verizon, I have an yeah, did, I they, did you ask them that that includes all their special fees? The charges. There will be fees on, on each one. Each I understand one. that, but that, that could be the difference between Huge Verizon difference. and AT&T, those fees. Yes. You'll need to know that. Yeah. Um, I can confirm that with you. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and you know, I paid Because there's no taxes on right. either one. Right. Because we're taxing yeah. them, right. so that eliminates yeah. a good chunk. Right. Um, what? The other thing that we do get if we switch to Verizon as a new customer 
we get a credit of $50 per smartphone. So it'd be $250 to get the five phones that we'd be looking at at the $34.99. Take care of the first bill. And then some. And then some, yeah. So, so that was a nice perk. So I see the, the recommended equipment and the associated fees, but I didn't, for Verizon, but I didn't see that for AD&T. Yeah, and actually, a lot of that's our choice. Like, for instance, we, we don't have to get car chargers. I mean, Verizon threw them on there, and he said, if you don't need them, you don't get them, no big deal. The same with the holsters, because they well, did. I don't know if I would be well, enough of those. Of the holsters? <laughs> well. Probably Jake needs 10. I don't use a holster. You, you, you no, no, I don't use a holster. I think they sure. I like just yes. putting it in my pocket. Yeah. I don't if I put it here, I'll knock it off or I'll I have yeah. plus of you. You ever see Fritz walk around? Yeah. He used to okay. have uh, about six of them around. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> but he like doesn't like, like to use his phone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we need to get, do the phones come complete with the, uh, with the cases, or the cases are added, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. definitely got to buy the cases. With, with an honor box, and that would be the same regardless of at and or Verizon. You might have those at the yeah. same um, You may want to see if you can work out a deal with them, if you're going to go with Verizon or, you know, mm -hmm. AT&T and say, listen, if we come with you, what, what are you going to do with me? Yeah. What do you do for me as far as the, the, the you know, the cases go? Because when I, when I got my phone, Droid Turbo, they just come out with it, and I got screen protector, the Otter Box. The guy just threw it in and took like 50 percent off the phone too. Yeah, but remember, they're already giving us 250 dollars off the first bill. If you don't ask, you don't get. You don't get. So oh, you know, right. the worst they can say is that. You know, shoot for the stars. I always say push. Yeah, I can they won't give away too much. Not like you're uh, asking it's, for three thousand. They're phones. getting a free. They're yeah. giving a free phone away. It's a small. It it's a small right. account. Yeah. And it, yeah, exactly. We're not getting 25, exactly. 30 phones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you go down there and talk to them. We'll have to get T-Mobile. <laughs> 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 this, 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 this actually happened with my, my buddy. He switched. He has like four phones for his business. He went from, um, from Verizon to Sprint because Sprint would buy out your contract and give you new phones. He got all the phones and all nine yards. They gave him he had two weeks to try it out. I said, Terry, Sprint coverage not that good. So his son goes to Alfred, right? Nothing. Yep. Goes to Pennsylvania, yep. couldn't yep. couldn't use his GPS, nothing. Yep. So Terry calls up Verizon. He says, Well, I'm coming back and they switch all the phones. You know what Verizon did? He gave they Verizon gave him an eight hundred dollar credit for coming back. So I mean it's worth asking the questions. Oh, okay. Okay. So your recommendation is I would lean towards Verizon myself. Right. And even as far as the cases, like you were mentioning, the one thing that they did um, tell me, both of them, is the case for the iPhone 6S is the same size as the iPhone 6, and we could probably find them in clearance oh. and not be paying them on the But the they're case. going to be free but anyway. And you said to that, or then you said to that, or you could just throw them in. There you go. <laughs> Let's talk about service for a second, okay? Because I know historically AT&T AT has been a problem. Well, they have more bars and more places now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I had to yeah. email this AT&T rep several times to even get a reply. Right. Yeah. Um, Verizon, I met with him Friday. He expected to have, every quarter, they have new promotions for government accounts. Mm -hmm. He expected to have the information Saturday on the 1st. He didn't, but he emailed me this morning, um, and actually today he emailed me about five times. Every time he got an update, he sent me first a, a pricing sheet, and then he did, in fact, by the end of the day, get the new promotions, and he forwarded that to me as far as what phones are free and that sort of thing. So would he be the same person servicing the account, or is he just the regional guy or just a sales guy? How does that work? Well, he, he is a regional guy, but he would be our contact. Okay. His office is in Henrietta. He says typically he's in the office in the morning. He's out doing calls all afternoon, so nice. he'd be available. Just stop in, and he would he said he would come and help set up all the phones. 
So my next question is going to be, um, would we be able to keep the numbers that we currently have? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's very good information. And you're leaning towards Verizon? You're uh, recommending Verizon? I am, yeah. I mean, whatever, whatever they, I, I'm partial AT&T, but uh, I'm partial way, Verizon. if it saves money, it saves money. Well, the other plus with Verizon is because they are, there are more Verizon customers, mm -hmm. we will see more just Verizon Verizon calls. So our, our minutes Rachel. will decrease right. because Don't they are calling them. <laughs> No, you don't no have to be like everybody else, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? You don't have to be like everybody else. Saving money. <laughs> We're, all, We're trying to be leaders, not followers. That's right. right. <laughs> be leaders. You're rebels. <laughs> no, I, I think whatever is more, and you get more for your dollar, obviously you got to do just, that's all I know is we've been cautious of the well, leasing. Well, yeah, the just the leasing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's another, I mean, really, yeah. you got to work the deal. Good point, Joe. Oh, if you want to uh, put it on the next board, the board meeting resolution to uh, yes. to switch, that's fine. Ask them who needs to sign the Is contract. Is there any reason why you can't make the decision today? Well, that's why I'm asking the question. If it's a contract that needs to be signed, authorization needs to be given to sign that. This is not so. John hasn't had a phone for a month. I got a phone. It's just. Broken. Right. Screen wise. <laughs> Why have you gone for a whole month without one? It's been broken. I have it, but I have it, but it, the whole screen's all cracked and broken. And yeah. Yeah. He's afraid he's going to cut his finger open. open. <laughs> no. You can't change it out. I could. Well, what? I, I, Sure. That's, that's why we're doing no, well, that, that's, that's, that's why we're basically doing this. what generated this whole right. discovery. See what was. you started? I, apparently. I just, <laughs> now your next thing you're going to do is you're going to take credit for saving us money. Let's just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you, couldn't, you couldn't switch it out because it's broken? Well, we could have gotten him a new phone. Yeah. Usually refurbished, right? right. Yeah. Right. But there, it, depending on, and I wasn't involved with the original AT&T contract, so I don't know yeah. what all those specifics were. Um, yes. We may have had to, had to pay for another phone for him. And against probably his wishes, I kind of prolonged his waiting, um, knowing that you would probably look at the whole contract and not just yeah. replacing the phone. Seems like I'm always in the middle of everything. <laughs> it must be that name, John. Jesus. I don't even know why. <laughs> 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 well, find out who has to sign the contract because we need to authorize whoever mm -hmm. needs to be authorized. We need to do that at a regular board meeting. Not, not, because this isn't, in my opinion anyways, an emergency situation where it needs to happen, this meeting. But you did have a, a heck of a lot of research on that, and I, I appreciate it. And um, you, you know, want John's phone in the meantime? He says. <laughs> you want, I don't, you want to use my phone? No. You sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't use it that much, just for emails, basically. Um, so yeah, you find that out, put it on the, uh, the next agenda for whoever needs to sign it, for the board to grant them authorization to do so. Okay. But thank you very much for all the research and bringing this to the board. All right. I still think we should look at this if we, if we do have a bunch of students. Well, sorry. Hey, I got to say. Yeah. Yeah. That's a month though, right? Yeah. Times. Yeah, but not a lot of versus 75. And I was so it's cheaper than just pay the 75. How many guys do you have in the field using these phones? I'm not sure. Well, then you, if you get everybody they, going, they go out and text. We're talking 34. So the guys? 
Well, yeah, talk yeah. Yeah. And after yeah. a call, they don't automatically dial and call phone. their phone. It's that's sent that's to that's the that's phone that's as a text yeah. message with who to contact and what the problem is. All right, next we have authorization from Mayor Cahill to approve Amendment 1 to the Water Power Lease Agreement between Verizon and the Village of Webster. Anybody have a chance to read this? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Trustee Bolito? Aye. Trustee Byer? Aye. Trustee Lancey? Aye. Mayor Cahill? Aye. Motion passes. Joseph, I'm just going to give this to you right now. I signed it. All right. project financing. Um, I know this was on earlier and I know we had a discussion and Jake is trying to set up a meeting with um, the engineering firm and the design team to discuss um, the project itself because they're projecting it coming in um, $200,000 over the budget and at the last meeting I attended I expressed concern um, that 20% over the, the, the budget was, in my opinion, unacceptable when they spoke about the ability to, you know, send each portion, different portions out for bid. So it's a little bit preliminary. I understand that we need to get this done quickly from the bonding standpoint, um, so we don't have to modify the bond we have already um, we already signed up for was like 850,000. Um, so that that's the reason that's on there. Um, the so, only piece that would have to be changed in the resolution is the fact that our maximum cost has gone up from a million twenty-four right. for fifty-four to a million two. Projected. Right. Right. And I don't know necessarily if it would just be a safeguard and if it actually didn't go up, yeah. you know, as I said before, they need a month to get us the funds so that we have the funds available to start paying when construction starts. Right. Okay. Do you want to weigh in? I would, I would like to wait until we get the meeting to I agree. Because we don't need that money in the next two months, three months. And I, I just, yeah, I, I totally agree where you're coming from. We, we talked about it. I, I was a little bit, um, I was a little bit disappointed when I, when I when I heard the numbers because from day one there was no there was no doubt this is what we have to spend okay so you know I was a little bit disappointed they came in with you know 1.2 million and um, you know I you know I expressed my concern my my disappointment and um, so we're we're getting down to the. Uh, very close to you know the time we need to start construction. So you know, hopefully we can uh, get this meeting. I know Jake sent out an email, I believe, yesterday. So within hopefully by the end of the week, we can have the meeting established, Chris. And everybody understand we're under the gun and we want to get this done soon. So and I'm not, I'm just, and I'll keep reminding you if I sure. keep that seeing. Okay. No, no, just no, so that it doesn't get doing forgotten that. about because. Absolutely. No, time to catch the bank, no payments can come. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, that 200,000 surprised me. And I, I would like to be apprised of, of the things that are yeah. that are in it. Uh, one of the things that right. was part of a discussion earlier was the lighting for yes. example, LED. Mm -hmm. Well, there are several kinds. Some of them are very obnoxious right. and unappealing, you know, mm -hmm. down the corridor. Some of them are not. And I was told that we would be able to look at a couple of them and make a decision. Well, here we are, yeah. one in April, and uh, you know that hasn't. Happen. Maybe there's a price difference. I don't know. So those are things that. Well, when are they having their meetings? Because I was involved in the beginning, and then I heard nothing in months. I don't think well, there's it hasn't been, been a meeting for a while. Yeah, I don't think it's probably some five, six months since there's been a meeting. Then we should probably be really pushing. Well, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Because to me, I mean, when's this going yeah, to be? Do we have bids already for the whole thing? Well, they're, what they're doing right now is they're in their final design and draft portion of, of the project before they submit it. So do you think it can really be ready by June to start construction June one? Yeah. They have to be yeah. Yeah. they have to abide by the time. Because yeah. that's two months away. Yeah. 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 That takes a lot longer than yeah, I don't think they will. <laughs> I don't I don't Well you have probably more experience than this than anybody else on this board, so I don't think yeah. I'm dealing with the same situation right now. We're supposed to start digging in April. Yeah. I guess that didn't happen. No, and lucky it'll be June. You know, June. Because if they don't start in June, I don't oh. know that they'll finish. They can't With the weather we have, right? Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Look what they've gotten done down on uh, North Avenue with uh, mm -hmm. with that project. They worked on the foundations all throughout the entire winter because we did have a significant frost. Right, right. And now they've got the uh, they got the framing going up yep. in yeah, the back I building. I mean, yeah, they're they're through. Yeah, once it can happen. Even yeah. in the windstorm, that was amazing. It can happen. All of that. Yes, nothing went down. It didn't. Well, that was surprising, actually. I know. <laughs> Trees came down. Yes. Um, well, okay, so then when are, gonna, when are we going to readdress this? Well, so Jake's waiting for the, the, he's setting up the meeting with council and design team. You'll be there. You're on the design team. Well, yeah. Okay. Soon we'll as that meeting is scheduled, Jake. Soon as the scheduled, everybody will be in. So we next is a legal matter regarding the cell tower lease, and the company is AT and T. And I got a call from Don. We got a call from a gentleman. I think he's an attorney representing AT and T. Um, and they had made a, I don't want to say a demand, but I think that regarding the movement of the antennas, they, they, they want to do something that um, I don't think that they've been apprised of certain aspects of the move, um, and they're not of the same mindset as Verizon is with respect to moving things over. So I called and left a message. I just got the call. From, I talked to Don yesterday. I got the guy's information today. I left him a message, so I have not had an opportunity to speak with this gentleman to let him know there's particular issues that I think he's not aware of. And the disappointing aspect, and I think Daryl brought this up, was we were all in a room, what was it, a year and a half ago, when we talked about this, and there was AT&T representatives there, everybody was there. So um, I don't think that anybody looped this guy in. So he's under some um, mis, mis... I think he's a little, a little bit uh, either... Misguided. Misguided or not, has not been looped in. Um, and there's some contractual language um, that they need to be made aware of. And I don't understand how they, they're not, AT is definitely aware of the contractual language. So what they're proposing to do, they're really not going to be able to do. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm not going to discuss it openly until I have a conversation with this guy. So, yeah, I told you were right, that was a way to go anyway. Was, wouldn't that be part of what we're paying CDG for? No. Oh. No. This is something yeah, this different. Is different. Mm -hmm. I to find out. Mm -hmm. yeah, a quick discussion with that. Uh, cell tower update. So the, the contract has been sent over, uh, Nutt has signed it, the bonding paperwork is in there. 
I don't know if you guys had a chance to read the 68 pages <laughs> right here. Uh, between the time we got it at 5 o'clock and, oh, and right yeah. now. But the, 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 important, the important version pages to that um, contract are pages, I think it's A1 through A15 or 16, um, which are okay, the, the contractual past language with NUD. Um, Some of it, but I did read out 68. Well, not 68. And I did the, the read out 68. A 16, yes. I, about. The beginning part. I did. I'm, I, and, and here's, I, I'm not really, I'm not comfortable with, you know, asking for a resolution to authorize mm -hmm. me to sign this because you haven't mm -hmm. read it. Completely. You haven't read it. I know Al hasn't read it. Um, you've read some of it. Yeah. I've read, I read the contractual language and but because of the timing issue, we need to get this done. I know. Immediately. So I guess I would propose that you know we give a, the members of the board a couple days to read this over and have a special meeting to get this thing signed before the end of the week. Because it's that important. We're under the gun. But that will start within five days, seven days? Yes, seven days, I believe it is. So then we'll start. So today's what? Tuesday? There's no planning meeting Thursday. Alright. Can you guys take the next couple days to review it, read it over, and we get together on Thursday? Is that okay? Gary? Yes. <laughs> Mayor. Yes. Thank you for your cooperation. Let's to see if you can pick up your friend Dale to attend the meeting or two. I don't know where. I think he moved out of state. There is a residency requirement to be a member of the board. <laughs> All right, so we'll get that scheduled, Josette. Put that out. Um, please notify the newspaper and uh, get the notifications um, that we'll be meeting on Thursday um, regarding the uh, construction of the cell tower. And the, Thursday, April 6th. That's correct. At 7, 5. 7. 5. 7. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7.
before we get into this. And I, I don't even know how this like popped into my head, but it did. Um, I read this intermunicipal agreement probably a year, two years mm -hmm. ago, and the question I originally asked after we established a sewage rental fee of $98 was like, okay, so we're charging our residents $98, but we're charging the town out of district users 130 To me, it didn't seem fair because the stuff's going down the same pipes. <coughs> We're not doing anything special, we're not doing anything different. Um, so it didn't really make sense to me. So I, I, I initially spoke to Jake and I said, you know, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me from you know, an equitable standpoint, from a fair standpoint, that we're charging our residents $98, but we're charging the town 130 And there is an intermunicipal agreement um, related to this. And at the time, and I got some history on it, the, the town was never, or the village was never really able to accurately give the town a, a, a number as to what it was costing for a, per unit because forever the cost of the sewage treatment plant was encompassed in the property taxes. So they couldn't really derive a, a, a number. It, it took us, what, a year and a half to two years to come up with a number? So then we came up with the, the $98, okay? So that, that's the history of this, and I asked Jake, you know, and he's like, hey, you kind of have a good point, but let me think about it. And then, you know, he, he added in, well, there's the, you know, what was his first point he made? He made several. The first was the infrastructure costs, and I'm like, well, that's part of the 130. They've been paying that for the whole time. And well, what if somebody else hooks up? Well, if somebody else hooks up, I would presume that that would be subject to the $700 hookup that everybody else has to pay. So, you know, because of this agreement, we're saving how many dollars in taxes, Christina? Because this is what this says. It, it essentially says that, you know, we're going to charge them a reduced rate and they're in turn, they're not going to charge us taxes on the property, uh, real estate property taxes in, in, on the wealth tax. And it's all spelled out in this agreement. Okay? So we're saving what? Town and county $13,949 for the current 17 fiscal year. Right. Now, the flip side of the argument is that, that Jake brought up later was okay, well, we're charging the town 130, but they're charging their residents 167.50. Okay, and I understand where you're coming from, but my position is, okay, that's that's a discussion that is irrelevant to this intermissible agreement because that's what the town is charging their residents. This is what we're charging the town. That's an issue that they should take up or the residents would take up for the town. I always fall back and have been falling back on the fact that this $130 per unit number was preceded us having an actual sewage rental fee. But now that we do have a sewage rental fee, why would we charge them higher okay, than we're charging our residents? So my position is, my feeling is, that we should reduce the $130 per unit rate to the $98 rate, the same as we're charging our residents. You're not doing. Okay, well articulate please why you're not. Because I think it's, it's a pretty common practice, so if you're delivering a service to your local area, you're going to get it at one price, and if it goes to outside of your area, you charge it a little more. I mean, that's just, just it's a normal practice. Apparently the town does it with on their own with their own customers. I, I don't know what they do with their own customers, but it's it's not like it's not like you're going from Ontario right. to here. It's like right across the street. Well, they right? should get a discount yeah. rate because we're the village. They should pay a little more because they're not the village. That's just a typical practice. Just not paying but yeah, but that's the whole premise behind this was the 130 dollar rate was we did not have a sewage rental fee at that point. So this is a number. I don't know how they came up with this number, but the town had tried to get a number from. The, from the village for years, and, and 
They couldn't because it was included. But now it's not included. We know what the rate is. But additionally, what? we charge a little more, the village residents pay a village tax, plus a sewer fee. It's sort, of, it's sort of like when, I mean, yeah. separate, but I mean, when we had compost, if you were a village resident, yeah. we sold, you, you got it for this you know, X amount. If you lived across the street, but you were a town, you didn't pay what the village paid. Exactly. I mean, it's the same. And what did that person across the street give you in return? They shut us down. Did they give you money? Well, that's a bad example. It's a bad example. I walk right into that one. Okay. But you have to remember, all right, that as a result of this agreement, we're saving the village of Webster taxpayers a pretty significant amount of money. Okay. So I don't think that it behooves us to say, listen, we're charging out of district, we should charge out of district the same as the interest rate because it's going down the same pipe. Really, it really is. And they're saving us, you know, a significant amount of money because if this intermissible agreement goes away, well then up goes our, our rates. So what happened to this? And if you're gonna be sarcastic, Mr. Walter, you can leave. I've had enough of you, all right? I really have. Or sit up here and throw 20 so I can grab yeah. one. Yeah. If I had them, I wouldn't throw them. <laughs> really so what about this agreement right here? Yeah. 91. You know, I'd like to have Don either on board. What about this one? Does this become superseded? Because this right here talks about you know, sewer treatment plant and the water, all of that. And that's an agreement that was between the town saying, we're not going to tax it. To be honest with you, I mean, at this 1991, I was still a summer help, so I wasn't giving right. much to do with uh, graduated in 90. I don't know. Well, I'm just asking, so what yeah, happened? Yeah, I, 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 I have to read over it, I guess. You know, well, I yeah, at, when I read through this, this I think is the. Then obviously, I got to have time. In on it. But this to me, this to me is the vehicle to get to this. Okay? Because I believe that you, these this articulates the law that allows this to happen. Now, I don't know if there was an, an intermunicipal agreement that preceded this. Well, what, with respect well, I want to, to know, that. was there a fee so, schedule in 2006? Was there a fee schedule which differentiated between the village and of course, we didn't have it be that at that particular yeah. point. Yeah, you mean this right here? You no, no, said 2006. No. This is 2009. I know. But I know. And that's when a fee was was, um, was established. Put on this law. Yeah. In 2006. But prior to this, did we charge? Did the village charge for out of district? An out of district resident to tie into our sewer? Line? Did we have a charge on the book? A fee on the books? I don't know. And that's what I would like to know. Was there something that was before this? You know? and, um, I mean, even, you know, would it be worth all the effort it would take to find that out? I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah, well she yeah. makes a good point. What, what well, you won't be working on the tax because this is where we are right now. Yeah. So she makes a good point. You know, this is where we are right now. Whatever happened preceding that, this supersedes that, so it's really irrelevant. Um, I would hope that some notification would go to those residents that are receiving ours and say, hey, they're now paying $69 to the town for the service they don't provide to you. You mean 98, right? Pardon? You mean 69. 98. No, the 98 is the service that we out of that 167 that they were getting charged, they are getting charged. 98 of that is for an actual service. The rest, $69, is just the town. Well, that's that's like I said, that's that's not up to us. Now, that's I do have a problem, Howard John. You have to consider this. Okay. A lot of, a lot of this has to change because right now, the way that this states is that the rate for out of district users shall be the rate of 130, and any and all subsequent increases in the rate shall not exceed the rate increase for the town sewer rate. That has to change. Mm -hmm. This has to change, too. <coughs> this is missing in there. Can you read that? I'd say you just leave it alone. No connection to fee language. Right. But that has to change, because if they're going to tie into our 98, 
and let's say we go up $20, yes. out of district has to go up $20. It cannot be tied into, well, exactly. the town went from 167 to 174 they went up $7, so an out of district, you can't go up more than $7. Absolutely. I, I yeah, so there's, that, kind of there's, there's got to change. There, right? Obviously, if we're going to change the rate, this is subject to sitting down and having discussions regarding that. Okay. My purpose for bringing this to the board's attention was, as I've articulated, is that there seems, it's, in my opinion, inequitable that we're charging the town 130, yet we're charging our residents 98. So I just wanted everybody to get on the same page because the village taxpayers are significantly benefiting by this intermunicipal agreement, and I just want it to be fair. Um, so I absolutely agree with what you're saying. That you know that needs to be adjusted going forward, but I think that we should definitely charge the same to the out of district users that we're charging our people. Just from a fairness standpoint. I'm just sorry. Okay. Well, then you're, what you're doing is, is yeah. subject by disagreeing. Okay. This intermunicipal agreement could go away, which would result in. Well, you shrug your shoulders. Uh, you, you can't say, it's a by me disagreeing, this agreement goes away. I'm one person, not a five-person board. If the board disagrees, I know, it's not if, if, agree if the board listen, if the board disagrees with yes. this, this is this intermunicipal agreement is subject to, you know, renegotiating and going away, and that would be a significant increase in the tax rate to the village of Webster residents. So that I question. So I, what I, does it I say in the third paragraph, John? What does it say? In the third paragraph, where it talks about whereas, and it gets down here, the town exempting all property owned by the village within the town jurisdiction from town real property taxes in perpetuity. Yep. You're going to be able to change that legally? No. Keep reading. Because I thought I saw someplace in there where there is a suburb of Melbourne. What happens if the future board decides to revisit the mm -hmm. sewer fee and, 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 re again. and get it, and then it, and then you're charging them the ninety-eight dollars? Are you going to take that away? What's that? So it's fair again. What are you talking about? I just said, what if the, the next board reviews the sewer fee and decides there's another avenue for it? Yeah. For then what? Then what will we do? You would have to. I would have presumed. Make it zero for them too. You would have to review. Yeah, you would have to revisit that. It's actually reiterated in number two down the mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I'm inclined to sit down and renegotiate this contract based upon equitability. That's what I'm coming from. Judy? You're now, Daryl? I am going to probably have a conversation with our legal advisor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this was just thrown out here tonight, and so I have not... Let's put this on the agenda for a further discussion at the next board meeting next week, please. Give anybody an opportunity to talk to whoever they need to talk to regarding that. And we can uh, make a decision after that. Point. I understand. I understand what you're saying, but you're forgetting the, the flip side of that. Okay, you're forgetting what we're saving by not being charged property taxes. So okay? maybe a simple solution. But renegotiate. Just, just throwing this out there. When we bill at that higher rate, they just decide to agree in a contract. They just take off the taxes and pay the difference. Just a thought. There's a thinker. All right, so Chris, budget. 
I've given to you the tentative budget that was presented to you the 23rd of March, printed in the paper last week. And then the colored copy, this is just for discussion purposes, no changes technically have been made because the presentation will be on the tentative budget. There have been some changes, and the changes are such. They're in yellow on your color copy. The bond payments for the water department, the revenue on that went up slightly because I had the wrong number. So revenue went up about $2,300 or so. <coughs> okay. Secondly, reflected also in yellow is the 4% increase in, in payroll, which reflects the 1% that wasn't added from last year because the contract is yet under, <coughs> under negotiation. So those yellow payroll lines are a reflection of that increase. And then finally, on the last page on the, of the general budget, serial bonds, principal and interest, has it decreased for the general fund because the sewer outfall bond has been moved to the sewer department. Therefore, the general fund will be responsible for less of those bonds in principal and interest for the year. And so in that same one, right, I got you. And so therefore, the transfer to reserves for water decommissioning has gone up because we're getting more money because we're not spending as much on the bonds. Those are the changes that will be requested to be a resolution will be done. Will subject, be request, subject to a resolution to amend the budget. After the public hearing, right? Uh, or yeah. when I'll probably right before the adoption. I'm not sure what it's got to be before it. the adoption, but I believe it's got to be after the public hearing because we've already published what well, the, bu the budget was going to yeah. be yes. for the public hearing, so yeah. we can't really change that. No. And so the changes on the sewer budget are about the same. Um, the yellow on the colored copy of 890 is the 200 that was originally there for tax bills, but I've added the 690 for oh, the, look at that. the amount that we just, I assume, <laughs> I assume we would approve that item. And if you didn't, then we would have changed it back. That's why it's in yellow. Copy. Would you change it back with tears? No. Okay. I love to do what I'm doing here. No, I'm just saying because we would have lost the money. Um, the other two yellow items on page two are the payroll lines going up to 4% as opposed to the three that were there before because of the contract. And then the final page, principal and interest for serial bonds were lower because the store outfall has been added. We had 40, we now have 60, 25, 550, now we have 31, 675. And then that in turn reduces the amount going to the reserve accounts. Thank you very much, Christina. Mm Questions? Anybody? Unrelated to specific numbers, but once the uh, contract is approved and we are going Which to contract are you talking about? The union. 
time frame. And we're going to be paying out the retro pay right. to all the, the employees. Right. Um, our hope is that you won't have a problem with that money going to their default departments as opposed to having to split it out into the 15 different payroll expense lines. What is the default department? So for the DPW guys, it's going to be chips and... Oh, I see what you're guys. saying. Try, instead of instead trying to figure out what they did every single day in... Yeah, exactly. absolutely. That's okay. absolutely the way to go, in my okay. opinion. Because it's, it's, it's still going to be a significant amount of work to, to yeah. split it out with sure. regular time, over time, shift right. time, different pay rates. But she, she, Meg has been tracking that, right? Yeah. Okay. So that, that's going to save a lot of time. Yeah. So that was yeah. great foresight on your part. Thank you for that. Yes, absolutely, I agree. Anybody else have anything? That's it. I'll entertain a motion and a second. Close the meeting. Second. Trustee Polito. Aye. Trustee Lancey. Aye. Trustee Byer. Aye. Mayor Cahill. Aye. Motion passes. 802.